Hey there, thanks for joining me on this episode of Tropical Weather Impact. Meteorologist Pete Malone in New Orleans as we kick off a new week here. It is September the 15th, your Monday. We are in the heart of September and the tropics are still so, so quiet here locally. We're doing great. We've had low humidity and hot days and that's going to continue for the Gulf Coast here. Let's talk about the features we are watching. I'll step off here so you can get a broad view of what we're seeing this morning. The Hurricane Center is only officially highlighting this tropical wave. It's a massive tropical wave. We're going to talk about that. We'll talk about where it's headed near term and long term. We'll look at some steering currents for you as well. And also something that's not being highlighted by the Hurricane Center because it's not really tropical, but it is low pressure forming along the East Coast. So this is something Thing to be aware of if you live in the Carolinas, coastal areas up into Virginia, getting up into parts of uh, New Jersey as well uh, uh, in Delaware, we're going to need to watch this low pressure for some rounds of rain over the next few days. Again, it's not really tropical in nature because there is an upper level low spinning with it. Now, it doesn't really change the impact. It's low pressure forming. And so this is going to be along the East Coast, but I think this is going to catch some people by surprise because it's not being highlighted by the National Hurricane Center. But just want to make you aware that you've got a rainmaker on the doorstep of North Carolina. Let's show you a precision cast on what's going to happen. You can see the low pressure there spinning right off the East Coast. It's producing rain, the outer banks. It's not going to be nice weather there this week and um, it's some rain up towards portions of Virginia and getting into DC. So going out in motion here, you can see clear as day, the low pressure spinning right along the coast. This will be a flood risk for some of these areas. Norfolk here, there's DC. And so I think this is going to be a heavy rainmaker, especially Tuesday for those areas. Fast forward even more into Wednesday and Thursday, or rather Wednesday, and you still have this low pressure spinning right along the coast. It's doing a little tour of our major cities here. There's DC, there's Philly, there's New York. They're going to see some rain from this by the middle of Wednesday into Thursday. And so just be aware there will be some heavy rain. There will be some stronger wind gusts and rough seas. How much rain are we talking about? Well, it's not a widespread flood issue, I don't think, but you've got this little swath here where you could see over four, maybe five, six inches of rain, especially the closer you get to your coastal areas. Once you get inland, your rainfall totals drop off fairly quickly there. And so that'll be the imminent thing that's a weather maker for the United States. Outside of that, the rest of us are just hot and dry. We've been so dry in New Orleans, we could use some rain. Uh, being bored this time of year is not a bad thing. It means there's nothing like this coming our way. So here's where we stand. It's not currently an invest, but I do think this will be tagged as an invest at some point, maybe today or tomorrow as the Hurricane Center continues to track this. It's ha had some healthy showers and thunderstorms with it this morning. What you're looking at here is a large tropical wave sitting right in the heart of the main development region. It's got some obstacles ahead of it, though, and so not sure this is going to blow up into anything significant in the near term. They are giving it a 40% chance in the next 48 hours, an 80% chance, a really high chance of development through the rest of this week and into early next week. I think its best opportunity to become a named storm or even a hurricane is going to happen once it reaches this area. And so as it's traveling here, it's going to have some wind shear ahead of it. It's also got some dry air in the vicinity of it, and so it may not really look healthy as a storm until it gets in this zone by mm, the end of the weekend and early next week. Now the Atlantic has really been hostile to these storms with dry air and wind shear, and so there is still some of that ahead of this right now, and that is a limiting factor and an uncertainty on how much this could organize. Now the good news is the current thinking is the most likely scenario seems that it stays just north of the islands. There's Puerto Rico, there's the Leeward Islands, and there's the Dominican Republic and Haiti. We're thinking the best chance uh, or the most likely thing with this is it stays just north of the islands and then has some out to sea options. But for a while, this feature is going to be traveling northwest. For a while, it's going to look like it's coming right at the US, but then we think a turn out to sea. It does look like a good option with this one. What are the models showing? Well, the GFS and European, these are our two big models we use. Uh, these are not the ensemble spaghetti models, but the GFS is in red. That's the American one. The European one is in green. Let's go out in time. Notice they show this. That's a large tropical wave taking some time to come together. Being that it is so large, it probably does protect itself from some of that dry air. This is Thursday. I still think we probably have a fairly unorganized system on Thursday. Fast forward into Friday, Saturday and Sunday. What do we got going on here? Well, the GFS has a hurricane at that point by next week as it 
passage just north of the islands. The European model also has a developing storm. And look, these are well north of the islands here in the model land. So that's good. We like to see it. Of course, we want to watch these trends to make sure it doesn't get any closer. But here we are on Sunday. Looks like it's coming towards the US, but the pattern starts to shift. And I think we've got some out to sea options. Notice how it goes, slows, and then it hooks a hard right. That often time happens this time of year with as we get into September and October because our atmosphere is changing up so much with these cold fronts and these troughs of low pressure moving on through. And so I think we've got some out to sea options here. Now there's a lot of uncertainty in this part of the forecast. Notice there may actually be a couple other features trailing behind these are this tr initial tropical wave that we may need to watch as well. And so models seem to think that the Atlantic's going to wake up soon. We'll have to wait and see. Hopefully it stays in a suppressed phase, but this is the best, at least the, the most aggressive models have been with the system uh, in a while. And it's been since August 28th that we have had a named storm. In fact, we uh, have never had a long stretch like this in the middle of September of no named storm. It is so incredibly rare for us to have it this quiet out in the Atlantic Basin. It sure has been nice though, hasn't it? Not sure it's going to last. So the steering patterns, what's going to happen here? It'll be interesting to see how does this ridge break down. Now that feature I was talking about off the East Coast not being tagged by the National Hurricane Center because being fueled by that right there, that's an upper level low. And an upper level low uh, means that this low pressure is not being fed off the warm waters. For it to be a tropical system, it has to be fed off the warm waters or at least partially fed off the warm waters to be subtropical. In this case, this is mainly a non-tropical low, but uh, sometimes it can transition get characteristics. Either way, that's what's causing that off the East Coast. So here's what we're watching. This ridge of high pressure right now, that's the tropical wave is down in here. That's an upper level low spinning just north of it. That's some wind shear too. And so that's why I don't think it's in the best environment for the next couple of days. It probably will struggle somewhat, but that's the tropical wave right there. As we go out in time, and what we're looking at here, this is the European model steering current. We go out in time. What's happening? Well, the ridge is still ahead of it through the end of this week. And so that's why it's going to be gaining latitude very slowly here. That's why it looks like it's coming directly at the East Coast. But what happens next week with the steering pattern? Well, we perhaps get this decent trough digging down. That's an upper level low trough. There's a trough. Look what it does to that ridge. It erodes that ridge and that's its escape out to sea. Now, again, you, it's all about timing here. You don't want something to get trapped underneath the ridge and try to get into the Caribbean. There's really not a whole lot of support for that right now, but you do like this type of outlook when you've got a storm trying to form right in here. It's not going to ride around that side of the ridge. The ridge is flowing like this. And so that steering current would go out to sea. And again, the more latitude it gains, in September, the less likely it is to impact the United States, especially something this far out. Plenty of time to watch it. Let's take it day by day. But I do like what I'm seeing right now with the steering currents into early next week. So it's been a while. It has been 17 days since we've had a named storm in the Atlantic Basin, maybe 18 days at this point. It's one of the longest stretches during this time of year uh, that we've never had a named storm. It's so incredibly rare. Last one was fair and Next one up is still Gabrielle. We'll see if this one ends up getting that name, but that's where we stand right now. And so far, the season is now running slightly below and behind schedule. So we love that, but uh, it's been a really interesting, interesting season so far. And remember where we stand right now on hurricane season as we still have a large chunk of it left after the peak of hurricane season. Uh, it's not that 50% of the activity is before the peak and 50% is after the peak. The curve of this is weighted heavier on the back side, meaning hurricane season typically ramps up faster and sl it slows down uh, slower, if that makes sense. So basically, it takes a while for hurricane season to wind down. And so even in October, we can get a lot of activity. Last year, October was a really good example of you can't really let your guard down until until uh, the season's gone. And really, once we get to late October and early November, we are feeling pretty good about the season. But this is about where we are right now, just past the peak. The climatological peak is September the 10th. September is a busy month. And once it ramps up, it can sometimes be like a flip of the switch and all of a sudden you're tracking multiple systems. I still think October has opportunities for storms as well. And yes, you can get some big hurricanes. I mean, think of Hurricane Michael. Think of these impactful storms that we've seen in the US in the month of October. Zeta. 
was a couple days for Halloween in New Orleans. That's a rare example of a weird storm, but that's what we watch October as well. That's going to do it for your tropical weather impact on this Monday, September the 15th. Could Gabrielle try to form in the coming days? It absolutely could, but right now there are no immediate tropical threats to the U.S. Just watching that low pressure and some heavy rain along the East Coast from the Carolinas up through Virginia and up towards Jersey here in the next couple of days. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you right back here. Same place, same time tomorrow.